the cardiovascular system. Cardiovascular examination begins with the positioning of the patient at 45 degrees in bed and with the chest exposed. Mike, examine your heart, please. Um, you mind taking off your shirt, please? Thanks. It is vital to stand back and make a general inspection, looking for dyspnea, cyanosis, an intravenous line, an ECG monitor, and so on. The detailed examination begins with the hands. Here the examiner is looking for clubbing, the stigmata of infective endocarditis, and for peripheral cyanosis. Thank you, just relax there. The pulse is assessed for its rate and rhythm. And I'm also going to feel the pulse in the top of your thigh. Radiofemoral delay may be relevant only if there's a history of hypertension. The blood pressure cuff should be two-thirds the size of the upper arm. Just relax your arm for me. Begin by estimating the systolic blood pressure by palpating the radial pulse. Then the diaphragm of the stethoscope is placed between the lower edge of the cuff and the brachial artery and the cuff is pumped up again. Examination moves on to the face, where the eyes are inspected for scleral jaundice and the orbits for xanthalesma. Look at the conjunctivae for pallor. Loss of the normal contrast between the anterior erythematous conjunctiva and the posterior pearly white appearance is a reliable sign of anemia. Look for the malar flush of mitral stenosis and in the mouth for the high arched palate of Marfan syndrome and at the state of the teeth. Now the important cardiovascular signs found in the neck are assessed. And relax your neck back. Look carefully at the JVP and attempt to assess its character and height. The normal JVP can be seen to flicker twice during each cardiac cycle. Pressure over the upper abdomen for 15 seconds normally causes a transient rise in the JVP. A more sustained rise is a reliable sign of left or right ventricular failure, the abdominal jugular reflux test. Next, the character of the carotid pulse is assessed. The examiner's attention now turns to the precordium. Look for scars, pacemakers and chest deformity. The apex beat may be visible. The examiner now begins palpation of the chest. This usually starts with an attempt to feel the apex beat, establish its position, that is, where it is in relation to the midclavicular line and which interspace it is in, and to make an assessment of its character. It is worth spending some time on this important part of the examination.
Palpation to the left of the sternum is performed to feel for a parasternal impulse. The hand then feels over towards the apex and at the base of the heart for the presence of a thrill, which is a palpable murmur. Auscultation is usually begun at the apex, with the bell of the stethoscope, and then with the diaphragm. The lower left sternal edge and the base of the heart are listened to in turn. If there is a systolic murmur, listen over the carotids to find out if it is conducted there or if there is a carotid brewy present. The mitral area is reassessed with the patient on, in the left lateral position. Here the tapping beat of, a, of mitral stenosis may be palpable and the middle and late systolic murmur of mitral stenosis may be audible. Thank you. Could you sit forward for me? Feel the base of the heart when the patient is sitting up for the presence of a systolic thrill. In some cases, for example, if hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is suspected, dynamic auscultation may be indicated. First to take a breath in and then breathe all the way out. Empty your lungs entirely. When I've got my stethoscope in place to take a deep breath in, pinch your nose shut and then try to force the air out so as it pops your ears, okay? All right, go now. Hold it in, Look. hold it. Okay, now breathe normally. Thank you. The examiner asks the patient to lean forward and inspects the back for scars or deformity and for signs of edema over the sacrum. Percussion of the lower lung fields may reveal a pleural effusion and auscultation, the inspiratory crackles that occur in patients with heart failure. I'm going to take a deep breath in now. The patient must now be laid flat so that the abdomen can be examined. The liver is felt with the right hand as the patient breathes in. A pulsatile liver is a reliable sign of tricuspid regurgitation. If endocarditis is suspected, the examiner should feel for the spleen. The examination concludes with an assessment of the legs. After compressing the skin over the lower tibia to test for pitting edema, the examiner feels the dorsalis pedis and posterior tibial pulses on each side.
Compressing the calves for tenderness may be worthwhile if there is any clinical suspicion of deep venous thrombosis. The optic fundi should be examined if infective endocarditis is suspected.